Welcome to our worship service inside, outside, and online at Mount Zion Lutheran Church in Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Debbie, so glad you could be with us this morning. Let's begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and love us beyond our days. Amen. Together, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So that we may lead by a quiet 
and peaceable life in the godliness and dignity. This is right, and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge for the, of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Here ends the second lesson. from Jesus today is that sometimes we'll be good and sometimes we'll be, let's say, bad. Do you think that applies to you, Bill? <laughs> Quick to say yes. I like that. How about you? Probably. You know what? You're not alone because all of us here, sometimes we're good and sometimes we're bad. We don't mean to be bad. It just kind of happens. You know, when you tease your brother. <laughs> I thought that might be happening. 
I was the youngest girl, so I sneezed a lot. And Ollie, someday you'll be speaking up for yourself. Uh, I'm sure now he's like. He does the share of instigating. Oh, yes. Even though he doesn't need to do it either. <laughs> so what's the lesson here? When we aren't behaving too well, does Jesus still love us? Yep. Will Jesus leave us because we're not behaving well? Will he stay with us? Yes, through thick and thin, good or bad. Will he turn his back on us and say, well, Pastor Debbie's just been bad too many times and I just can't handle it. Will Jesus say that? No. He will stay with us, support us, love us, be by our side, no matter what. And you can always count on that. Yes, she said. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for never leaving us, supporting us, loving us, and always being with us. We can count on that, no matter what actions we take. We pray this in your holy name. Can you say it with me? Amen. Can you give me an amen? Oh, I didn't hear. Okay, thanks for coming out. You lose your hearing bell when you get older. <laughs> it's one of the things. It's one of many things. We can't begin to understand today's gospel unless we know what comes right before this passage. And it's a favorite story of the prodigal son. So let's do a quick recap of that story so we're all on the same page. A dad, the head of the household, has some money. And his son asked for his inheritance early, while dad is still alive. And the dad agrees to it. And what does the son do with that treasure, with that money? He squandered it. And he used it in an immoral or bad way. Then having wasted the treasure, which had been entrusted to him, he returned home where his dad reacted in a surprising way. Instead of being upset, the dad runs out to welcome a shamed and destitute long lost son. That was a good ending for a son who squandered much. Keep that in mind as we now dive into today's gospel lesson. It's the story of a rich man, head of a household, who entrusts his money to a manager. And what does the manager do with it? He misuses it. He's dishonest. In fact, Luke uses the same word in today's gospel as he does in the prodigal son. The manager squanders the money entrusted to him. Once again, at the end of the story, the head of the household, the rich man, reacts in a surprising way. He praises his dishonest manager and then commends his employee for having acted so shrewdly. Once again, there's a good ending for the squanderer. I hope by now you see the similarities between these two parables, which are back to back in scripture. But before we go any further, a warning for both of these stories. Jesus is hardly affirming dishonesty or shady business dealings. To be clear, these parables do not give us permission to go and sin, and Jesus will commend us for it. Rather, I believe Jesus wants us to focus on the head of the household, the father and the rich man, who reveal how God deals with us. You see, God entrusts his treasure to us. God gives us our generous inheritance to manage while we're here on earth. Any type of money or property, including the earth, that we have is a gift for us to manage. And that makes us stewards, 
not owners of everything that we have. And yes, sometimes we squander our gifts through our greed or by mistakes, too many to mention. God knows full well that we will make mistakes. And when we do, God keeps entrusting his treasure to us. And when we do make mistakes, God reacts in a surprising way. God forgives. God is patient. God rejoices in our change of heart when we return to him. God will simply not give up on us. He will not let us go, nor turn away from us. <laughs> That's a good ending for all of us. So how do we go forward in life knowing all of this? Hmm. That answer indeed is the heart of Jesus' teaching. These parables call us to remember the treasure God has placed in our hands, either individually or as a congregation. And God is so generous towards us that we are to stop and ask ourselves, what am I doing with it? Squandering through selfishness? Or serving others by becoming a blessing to someone else's life. To put this in perspective, uh, I thought I'd share three good endings when uh, members met, recognized each other's ordinary gifts that were entrusted to them, and were surprised how they could offer them in a new way for ministry that glorifies God. So the first is people with gifts who knew how to cook and serve a meal to larger groups, who had great project management skills, and wanted to connect with our surrounding community to let them know our Mount Zion doors were still open, resulted in the free First Saturday community dinners to feed others instead of only ourselves. And it has connected hundreds of people in our community. I looked it up. We began in October 2013. And I hope you'll celebrate on October 1st because it'll be the 10th anniversary of us doing this. Can you believe it's been a decade soon? Rick? Mm -mm. And bring a friend. We're serving lasagna. The second example is that there were people with accounting, bookkeeping, and investment, investment gifts that were entrusted to them, who were already involved in managing the church's money, gifts. And they discussed how they could increase Mount Zion's return above and beyond a certificate of deposit, who then identified a medium risk Fidelity portfolio, again in 2013, for the long-term assets. That, when I looked last year on paper, yielded 15%. We shall see what 2022 brings. And my third example is that there are people with gifts of reaching out to those in need. Felt it was important to create community partnerships we did so with St. John Lutheran, Sea Park Management and Employees, two local ham radio clubs, and now Belco. Did I miss anybody? To offer an annual three mile fun run walk community event. And all the proceeds help four individuals with disabilities living in the Churchtown Sea Park group home. And we have raised over $5,500 for them since 2016. I hope you join us on October 15th for the 7th anniversary. And please, bring a friend. The parables of the prodigal son and the shrewd manager ultimately tell us the same story. It's the story of a God who is persistently generous toward his consistently imperfect children 
who keeps entrusting the treasure of this life into our hands. It's never <coughs> easy to do this living in a world of idols where wealth demands our loyalty. <coughs> but the world is also part of God's creation and it can have much to teach us. Using the honest business practices that the world has to offer, it's smart, it's wise, and it's savvy. And so sometimes we <coughs> will squander those gifts entrusted to us when we take them for granted or don't use them as God intends. Like the two parables, our life stories are not perfect either. And it's why we need Christ to reconcile us to God and one another with his mercy and forgiveness. And that's at the heart of the gospel. But there will be times when we use our treasure well for God's will to be done, for the salvation of our souls and the blessing of our neighbors. And that is a story that is worth repeating, sharing, and carrying forward in faith. Amen. We will now sing him, Rise Up, O Saints of God, and it's in your bulletin, and we'll sing all five verses. <laughs> those in need, 
and all of God's good creation. God, our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth, enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Helper of the needy, you lift those up who are oppressed. Bring justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing beds, and emergency shelters. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Great healer of all, you provide comfort and mercy for those in need especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Be with those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Guide us to be the healing presence to others. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us. Bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God. We offer these and all of our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It's the time to find your Holy Communion kit. They are in the back here of the nave and in the worship basket outside. And let's begin the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If you are able, please lift your communicate for a blessing. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, <coughs> gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, <coughs> and his promise to come again. We ask that you bless and enter into these gifts of bread and juice, so that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. All glory and <coughs> honor is yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us, <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to come taste and see. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us and grant us peace. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. You can consume your communion now during this uh, communion hymn of meditation or at home. Now may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our last hymn for the day is Son of God, Eternal Savior, and we'll sing all four verses.
Thanks be to God.
don't worry.